10 seconds, in 9, in 8, in 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, happy 1994! Yo! <laughs> Welcome back uh, for all you avid listeners out there. Thank you for tuning back in uh, and watching if you're watching on YouTube. For anyone else who's new, this is a podcast discussing hip-hop through the decades, the culture that surrounds it, and current affairs. Um, so if you want to find out what's going on and stuff with us, follow at 1994s yesterday on Instas, subscribe YouTube, follow Spotify, subscribe uh, Apple Podcast app, and um, yeah, basically. Let's go. Yeah. For, uh, for all you people who have been watching, um, we are... As you can see, elsewhere today. But uh, New year, new us. Yeah, well, that's the beauty of uh, 1994's yesterday. We can kind of just be wherever we want to be. Yep. Which is awesome. This Today's episode is featuring the sounds of my dog in the background, who I will soon put in the room because her, claws, her claws are making too much noise. And those little jingles, you hear that? So her name is Honey. I'm going to introduce shout her out. real quick and then pop her in the room. Aaron, you, you, you tell them what's going down today. All right, all right. So today, um, as always, we have the uh, current affairs slash chit-chat sort of deals. Um, we're going to dive into... Uh, we've got an album of the week is... Um, what is it? Is Big L. Um, the... Uh, what's it called? Lifestyles over the poor and dangerous, of the poor and dangerous rather. Um, and yeah, I'm reading off my thing because I can't remember the top of my head. And we got a couple of tracks for first impressions. Um, so yeah, basically, um, if you, any of you guys out there have any questions or any feedback for us, make sure. I'm back. To slide into the DMs and uh, and let us know. Hope you're taking care of them. <coughs> I'm of back. Course, of course, of course. Had to go on a business trip real quick. Oh, yeah. Um, alrighty, so um, I have a question. What's up? How would you feel if I told you in like five to ten years time, right? Dead set, five to ten. So it's not that far away. Right. Um, you'll be able to buy augmented, the augmented reality um, contact lenses. So basically, like you know, like the sci-fi movies mm -hmm. and stuff. You have a heads-up display right here. So you know, you think, uh, oh, like maps, like Google Maps, right? right? So it will be right here in front of you instead uh -huh. of looking down on your phone or you just hearing it. Yeah, interesting. What do you reckon? How, um, I'd be hyped, but I wouldn't get them. First off. How are they connected? Like the so, amount of radiation that would have to be from the, you know? So from my understanding, it's like a, a Bluetooth thing. Um, they would have to have some kind of technology and that's in your eye. What if a malfunction blows up in your eye? So what it is, is it's it has a battery pack. Chill. Right? No. Uh -uh. It's a battery pack and the battery pack sits where the pupil is because obviously like we're not looking through the yeah. pupil. Nope. So the battery pack sits there. And it's like super thick. It's crazy. Wow, that's, crazy. That's I'll throw a, a picture. battery in your eye. I'll throw a p picture up here. Um, it's wild. With that. But um, I already, I don't like anything in my eyes. I don't even, even like, you know, when the contact craze, when everyone like was wearing contacts and they're like, oh, I got blue eyes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-uh. No. Your boy was not feeling it. I just, I can't even put my own fingers in my eyes. Like, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, now nah, you good. Well, that actually kind of hurt. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> your hands are salty, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's exactly. I was like, oh, that feels salty. Yeah, no, um, I'm good. All right, well, that's why I'm wearing these bad boys instead of glasses. I mean, contacts. Ooh, what up? Uh, well, all right. So then, what is something in tech that you would want to see in the future, um, um, or you know, something that um was a dream in the past but google glass like the normal glasses that tell you all the stuff well you know that they there's a new version of that that's just been like sent to developers and stuff right i want to see it yeah i'll throw it up there i feel like i feel like um there was all this hype and talk about it and then they were like selling units and people were using them and then yeah. it just vanished 
they were just like, oh, it's whack now. Yeah, really weird. Um, I saw somewhere along the lines that Apple had pattern designs for something super similar. I'm sure they'd be <coughs> sick, though. Well, that's the thing. Like, like, look, I appreciate Google making Android phones and the rest of it, but it's like Apple products just, or like Google making products and all mm-hmm. the rest of it, but Apple products just, they just are. So funny enough that you say that, because yesterday um, I was at church and my pastor's message was called hit it with a simple stick. Mm. And the whole point, like the beginning of her message just talked about Steve Jobs and and Mm. Apple and how they're so popular because literally a quote from Steve Jobs would be when people would walk into the room with like complex ideas, he Mm. would hit it with a simple stick and he would just keep hitting it with a simple stick until it was so easy that everyone in the room could easily understand it. And that's how eventually they came out with the iPhone. You notice everything Apple is simple. And it's that, all about that, simplicity. Mate, and that is why basically I think every sort of tech product as much as I can is probably Apple because it's seamless across. And exactly. I'm sure Android is the same. I'm sure it's seamless across to an extent. Uh, yeah. Whatever. I, I use Android for a while. It's not as simple it's as, not, as Apple. <clears throat> I just like the flu- fluidity. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. Is that word? Yeah. yeah. People people talk about being in the garden too. They they put you in this um in this uh like a hedged garden, right? Right. So like if you're in the Apple ecosystem, you actually can't really see what's what you don't really care what the heck Samsung's doing because they're not your device. Yeah. You would have to relearn technology pretty much if you wanted to get a Samsung phone. If Samsung phones came with iOS on them, you'd consider it. A 100%. Yeah, but they just they don't, so you just don't even give it the time of day. You're just yeah. like, eh, what's the point in looking into that? Well, yeah, actually, that's definitely true, man. Like, you know, they I guess Samsung just bought out their new phone. Mm-hmm. Um, the flippy one? Or the... There's yeah, a flippy there's one, one, and there's like a... One, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I was like, okay, cool, but I don't really care if it's like the best phone on the market because it, you wouldn't use it anyway. I just wouldn't use it anyway because I didn't also I would just wait until Apple like catches up because then what happens is, is Apple seemingly learns from their competitors mistakes 100% and then and then boom yeah, like it's it, beautiful it's, right yeah it's great so I mean yeah I'm a uh, Apple uh, so I'm waiting for Apple glasses that's pretty much Apple glasses there. yeah basically yeah I gla- no they don't really use I anymore you notice that yeah, it's like Apple Pro. They're yeah. going with the Pro side instead yeah. of the i side. Like um, the iPads, I think, were like the last thing that they called i. Because they didn't call it the iWatch. They called it the Apple Watch. They didn't call it the iPods. i earpods or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they call yeah. it the AirPods. Yeah, you know? yeah. So everything True. is like they stopped with the i. I is like whack now. You notice that? I feel like um, there's hundreds of companies that just stick an i at the front. <laughs> And they're just like technology, yeah. Or even like I plumber, I've seen that yeah, and true. things like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just means digital now. Yeah. So yeah, it's like the universal letter for digital. Well, email, not email. Email. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, moving on. Moving on. Um. I don't suppose you saw. Um, those guys, there was a group of guys down in Atlanta and they were impersonating <laughs> the Wu-Tang Clan. What? No, I didn't see that. <laughs> impersonating the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, That's incredible. Tell me more. They hired out um, Rolls-Royce Phantoms, like a, like two or three Rolls-Royce Phantoms. And I mean, like, that's like... Right. Right? Uh, and they <laughs> ran up like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of bills in like hotels, like on bar tabs and all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, and it ended up that only like they, they went to one hotel and then they tried hiring out 10 rooms. And then I guess the hotel manager was like, that's a bit weird. Why would they do that? Which in turn is weird that you question that because if you believe that they're Wu-Tang, then why would you think that they wouldn't want 10 rooms when there's like fucking... Like 10 members. 10 members yeah. or whatever, eight members or whatever. So <clears throat> anyway, and then he sort of clocked on, called the police, and the police were like, they ain't Wu-Tang. But only two of the guys went down for it. Everyone else got let off free. Right. Crazy is that? Hey, that's a good idea. Um, I'm just going to lose some weight, grow out my beard, pretend to be Drake. Yeah. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. 
the, the, what I don't understand is if you thought of any car to resemble Wu Tang, to, to, you know, I, I don't know the word, but if you picked any car to match Wu Tang style, it would not be a Rolls Royce. No way. At all. No, no, at no, no, all. No. It would be, be like it would be like something a bit old. It would be like, like the same way that you'd associate, let's say, Easy E with like a Cadillac, mm. right? Or like Snoop Dogg with a the Cadillac DeVille or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um I I don't know. I Wu Tang would almost be like a blacked out uh van with no windows. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. That's Wu Tang, the blacked out van with no windows yeah. and mad rims on it. Yeah. R- rims aren't like a too much of a thing, but the blacked out van. Yeah. Like that's it. That's Wu Tang. With smoke like coming the, out the windows. Yeah, with smoke coming out. Or like the, the big box truck. Yeah, yeah. Like just yeah. a big box. They would all chill in the box. You open up the box truck, it's pimping yeah, inside, yeah, yeah. but it just looks like a box truck. Yeah. Or even like a muscle car or something. But yeah. not a not a phantom. A phantom? Blows. That's like you need to be like a High end, like that's like something that maybe like Migos would arrive or in, Drake or, or, or Drake something. or somebody like that. Yeah, for Even sure. Even Kendrick wouldn't arrive in a Rolls Royce. I feel like it's a odd. That's a very specific niche rapper. Yeah, and I feel like that's a flex from like a back in the day flex. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people flex not like that anymore. I that's think. That's weird. Um. Well, no, Wu Tang would arrive in like eight motorcycles. Yeah, really. Some shit. Like, 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 like quarter. Um, yeah. Dirt bike type yeah, ones. dirt yeah, bikes yeah, yeah, and yeah. quads. Yeah, and they yeah. just hold like <laughs> that's what they would do. Rolls Royce. That would have thrown me off immediately. I was like, I'm not the man ain't getting no fucking Rolls Royce. What <laughs> yeah. do you mean? Um Well, uh aside from that, there's mm. a new two pack film being made. Um Is it a drama or is it um well, actual two pack film? It's like a uh Technically, we don't know exactly mm-hmm. whether he's alive or not, or at least, you know, Ooh. we all have our uh, theories, theories, th- theories, theories. Listen, he's alive, chilling on a beach in Mexico, everybody knows For that. sure. And that's exactly what it's about. It's about him and how he, like, faked his death. Um, you sent me the link, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where I've seen it before. Yeah. Right, right. Um, but interestingly, I, I read a little bit about it, and they were saying how he, um, in the hospital, they just flipped... Switch the bodies, right? Right. And what's interesting is is that it, in real life, not in like movie life, if mm-hmm. you look at his the photos from the um, coroner's report, uh-huh. first of all, he doesn't have five o like niggers, mm-hmm. like the gun tattoo mm-hmm. on the bottom of, uh, on the above his belly button, right? On his belly button, something like that. Something like that. He doesn't have that tattoo, and then other tattoos in like kind of miss, like just kind of wrong placements and stuff. You know how people like really yeah, yeah. like get zoned yeah. in and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I mean, anyway, he's chilling with Elvis, all them, all the boys, all the boys. So um, so yeah. But the problem is with this mm-hmm. is that it's being made, directed, all that other stuff by the same dude who did All Eyes on Me. Oh no! Why exactly? So that like super inaccurate. Um, oh. like, uh, just like, what's her face? Has got to stop. Jada, um, Jada Pinkett Smith came forward and she was like, That never happened, that never happened, blah yeah. blah, blah, like, yeah. from the movie. And it's like, so super drama for no reason, yeah. But, That's um, dumb. but maybe, maybe it'll be good. They had, they, uh, bleh, they don't have the same actor playing Tupac either, I don't think. And can I just say, just real quick as well, mm-hmm. I'm talking about the same actors playing. I was really happy in that all, all Eyes on Me that they had the same dude play Biggie as they did in yep. No Taurus yeah. B.I.G. movie. But the same time period, so there's a crossover of time period, mm-hmm. right? And for some reason in this movie, Biggie seems to have like a beard, like a, like goatee. a goatee thing. And it's like, I'm certain he never had that ever like he's not go, a goatee guy. Go back and watch like uh, on YouTube, like just the two pack Biggie clip yeah. um, from All Eyes on Me. And you guys out there as well, man, go and check it out. And you'll see he has a beard. And it's like, bro, so you you're gonna be have it that important that you can have the same actor play Biggie, but then not have the same continuity of Biggie apparently having. It's just all over the show. The movie's awful. 
And they think that my, they had, think he's like Common or something. Yeah, <laughs> Common is literally the only guy <laughs> yeah. in all of hip hop to have a goatee and <laughs> yeah. like be okay. Is he even hip hop Common? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he does he rap rap or does he? He's I consider him R and B like that bridge between hip hop and R and B. He Common. definitely sits on the fence. That's for yeah. sure. I, which I love. Yeah, I think yeah. that I think Common is brilliant. Or Yasin Bey, most deaf, most deaf, most deaf. Look, mate, most deaf is just. Fat Joe had a had a goatee, but he had the Puerto Rican goatee, yeah, which is the, different. The, the thin the, boy, the, the, yeah. Thin yeah. Thing. the cocaine goatee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so you can't get nothing caught in it. That's what <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. Jokes. Yeah. Because would you consider Tupac's a goatee? It didn't connect. Tupac's was nice because it was a mustache and a, and a, and a tuft, thing. whatever yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, chin yeah. thing. Yeah. But um, Biggie... One thousand percent did not have a goatee ever. I swear I've never seen any photos of him. No. So it's really weird that in the movie he is depicted with that. And I was like, I remember sitting there at the cinema and I was just like, man, there was so many things wrong with the movie just by sitting there. I was just like, disappointed, disappointed, disappointed. After all these years waiting for a movie to be made, they just need Spike Lee to make. Spike Lee needs to jump on just because I swear he was like supposed to do it at first and then. You know, creative difficulties. I want a movie about Jay Z's life. Jay Z just called Blueprint. Like, come on, that's obviously the title of the movie. Yeah, yeah. or just call it. No, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'd call it Blueprint or Hard Knock Life. That's too cheesy, almost. Yeah, it's too on the. Yeah, right on the money. Yeah, yeah. if it was called Blueprint, they'd be like, "Oh, what's this movie about? Oh, it's about Jay Z." What if you had a Jay Z and Nas like feud like that era? Yeah, of, like Jay Z and Nas. Well, you know, with the whole like um, TV show series that they're doing and stuff like that, like mm-hmm. they could definitely like do That's that. That's true. People would be interested in like seeing those like periods of times being relived, just like they do with the Wu Tang yep. saga yeah. thing that just came and out. And you need to get these guys on there to go, this is exactly what <laughs> happened. Say this, yeah. boom. Because I believe Wu Tang, yeah, yeah they had a hundred percent like hand inside yeah, of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like, um, mm. so I, I swear I read somewhere that like the dude who plays Meth, like hung out with Meth, the dude who played that's cool, right? Uh, the Ray Rizzo. played Rizzo. Um, oh, okay, but yeah, yeah, they all like hung out and and like sometimes it was only like some people only hung out for a few months, which is still quite a long time. Um, Who's your favorite Wu Tang member? Mm, meth and it's and it's meth purely because he's for me the most dominant out of the woo mm-hmm. right he's also the the buffest and like he's yoked yeah he's huge his voice is dope mm-hmm. lyrics lyricism mm-hmm. flow is dope and when whoever he teams up with e.g red man mm-hmm. it's just like Dude, Red Man Method Unofficial, man. that like, was crazy. Bro, Blackout and Blackout too were like yeah. illest, man. Um, huh. But yeah, so... Mine's got to be the Jizza. Just from like, Liquid Jizza. Swords, man. Oh, yeah, like, true. But then but then you have um, Cuban... Um, uh, was it Cuban, Cuban Link? Link, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Raekwon's... Mm-hmm. <sighs> That was fire, man. I remember like yeah. I remember like buying that ghost HMV. too. Like Ghostface. Uh it is difficult, actually. Did you um I, I believe it was Ghost like pressed Action Bronson and be like, This guy's just trying to sound like like this white boy's just trying to sound like me when Action Bronson first came out. Yeah, hundred percent. Like and Action Bronson was like, My man, you're my biggest inspiration. Like it's, you are a god to me. Yeah. Like please do not do this to me right yeah. now. It's like I think Action Bronson's sick though. Action Bronson's fire. Yeah. Um, but you know, one of the first ever so there was two hip hop albums albums that um really I first ever listened to. Shout out to my homie Henry Reckless Wright. Whoa. For Henry. Uh, for introducing me. So first was Roots Maneuvers first album. Um brand new second hand, I think is what it's called. I could be completely wrong, mm-hmm. um, which is like an English. What are they? Pop. What are they called? Uh, Roots Maneuver. Roots Maneuver. Yeah, super amazing. Like epitome of UK hip hop. Oh, Manuva. Yeah, like Manuva. Right, right, right. Like with I a U and a V. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other album was 
36 chambers. Like, when we're talking about yeah. when I was, like, maybe 13, 14, something like that. So I'd heard hip-hop before that and all the rest of it. And, like, I had had singles and stuff. Mm -hmm. But oh, it must have been earlier than that, man. It must have been, like, when I was, like, 12 or something. Anyway, regardless, shout out to Henry for introducing me to the Woo. Appreciate you, you this, brother. I don't know if, I mean, I know that you're not the biggest Tribe fan. Mm. But Roots Maneuver looks like Q-Tip. Yeah, no, massively. <laughs> Like, I thought this was, I was like, oh, Roots Maneuver, a.k.a. Q-Tip. <laughs> he looks identical. The UK Q-Tip. Yeah, UQ-Tip. UQ-Tip, I like it. Um, but yeah, so to bring it back round, Tupac dead? Nah. Question mark? No, nah, I don't think so either. Nah, man. Um, Wherever he is, I reckon he's live and kicking. That... You remember in Coachella when he's like, "What up, Coachella?" That was Tupac, bro. Like, you they, reckon? Just they just skyped him in. He's, he's you reckon? Shit. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I just want to stir the shit a little bit, bro. I remember when I first saw that, and I was like, "Whoa!" Imagine that was his reveal. Like he just came back, and he would he would be put in jail though, because obviously faking your own death. Is that side oh, yeah, note? Yeah, yeah. Real quick, I thought about this earlier. If you had the chance to fake your own death. But mm -hmm. all your family and everything, you still got to keep them. And you could just start over as Bartholomew Montenegro. Mm -hmm. Do right? I have to keep that name? The fifth. <laughs> and you're over there in Fiji mm -hmm. selling coconuts for a living. It's a fresh start. Well, Straight Breaking Bad style. I don't know. Would you? And I got to keep my family? Mm, yeah. Or does my family think I'm dead? If my family thinks I'm dead, no. Because if they think that I'm dead, my mom's going to have a heart attack and die. That's not good. Knock on wood. But I'm the light of her life. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if I passed away, my mom would just be like, yeah, what's the point? Came over. Yeah. I know Honey, my dog, would go nuts. She's chilling in the bathroom right now eating a pig's ear. She's good. <laughs> Life's good for her. Um, well, yeah. I mean, I guess I would. I mean, I don't know. No? I don't need to. I don't... Nah. Hey, I wouldn't either. I'd just move to another country. After all that, I wouldn't either. I like my name. You can just move to another country. You know what I mean? I did. Yeah. What do you think I came to Australia? Same. I'm dead same, in Brooklyn. Same kind of thing. I'm yeah. dead in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? I don't give a... <laughs> I'm dead. There were so many people that actually wanted to harm me. It's wild. <laughs> what? Yeah, for real. I didn't. I mean, I didn't move here purely because because of that. people were after me. But there was a lot of people that didn't like me, and, and it was like for bullshit reasons too. But you get come over here, you know, you join a church. I'm Christian now, fresh start. Bada yeah. bing, bada boom. And uh, five years later, here we are making a <laughs> podcast called 1994 was yesterday, <laughs> and I'm set up with this sick life, way better than it would have been in Brooklyn. Yeah, I was rotting, bro. Wow. Well, uh, all my friends, they're all on fucking, or not all my friends, but most of my friends are like in the exact same place that I left them five years ago. Yeah. Drugs, chilling, drinking, not doing shit, bro. Not being productive. Reaching their full potential. Not reaching their full potential. And, and, and again, this is, for all my friends listening to this, this is not all of my friends. Just a couple out there. There's, it, actually, the people, the people I call my friends, they, they're doing stuff. But the people that like were acquaintances, mm. most of them are fucking bums. <laughs> Ooh, calling people out or up in her. No, it's just I'm a, I'm I'm a bum sometimes too. You know what I mean? Yeah, probably shouldn't say that, but um, Such they're, they're not they're not bums. I'm joking. Um, no, they're, just, they're just like no they, reaching their full potential. Because New York is a jail. They lock you into this thing, and then they go, they go. Oh, I want to move someplace. I want to start fresh. I want you always want this thing, but you never do it because mm. you're you're stuck in this cell, right? Um, life in this. Oh, what is it? Um, this is like life is no different from a cell. It's a Wu Tang. Um, yeah. Life in this place is no different from a cell. Yeah. It's the exact same thing, bro. You, why do you think you have your bodega on the corner? Your shoe store right here. Everything is right there in your neighborhood. It's meant to keep you right in. Yeah. And so they you don't go, need nothing else. Let's go on a big holiday. Let's go to Florida. Three hour flight away. Mm. That's like going from Sydney to Gold Coast, bro. And that's a big trip for them. I don't want that life. Move somewhere else. 
Moving on. Sorry, well, that got real deep real quick. That's all good. That's what we're here for. Um, lastly, in related culture sort of news-ish sort of, face tattoos, right? So uh, remember Amber Rose? Um, bald head? The bald yeah, head chick. Right. So <laughs> she... <laughs> I got a funny story about that in a, in a sec. Continue. <laughs> so she got her children's names... Well, well, one of the children's name is Slash, random, and then one of them is Sebastian. So she, but she got Bash and Slash in script on her forehead, bro. Like full. Are you kidding? I, I throw it. I throw it. I throw yeah. it up here. Um, what? And then this is so. This is there's three people. This is all last week. Um, the game got a sideways eight above his right. It looked like a temporary right. tattoo. So, even though the game's the game's skin is jacked up, like yeah. he, he he already has started out getting. He looked like he fell off the ugly tree and hit every stick on the way down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that guy has never looked handsome at all, <laughs> even in his previous life. Shots fired no, all I'm just day saying, today. I'm just saying, I'm, this guy's got an AK-47 <laughs> in his mouth. Shit. Sorry, I had three coffees before starting this. Um. Well, apparently, the reason why it's sideways is because it's so the eight represents um. Kobe, his first number for Lakers, and it's on the side for Infinity Loop, so it's like Kobe Forever type thing. I mean, mm-hmm. look, I'm down for com- co- commemorative blur uh, tattoos and stuff, and like memorial tattoos, but that's um, not the best one out there. Um, and then your man's Chris Brown, he got a Jordan 1 tattooed on his right cheek, like right here. What? Like just like a... When was this? All, all three last week. Something's going on. Crazy. Something's in the water in California, bro. Crazy, man. Crazy. But um, Some straight Illuminati shit. But face tattoos, what are your thoughts? As like a whole... Because, I mean, it seems to be popular since the mumble rap sort of phase. You know what else was popular? Chinese caricatures you mm. know what else was popular douchebag guy tribal you remember oh, that and barbed wire barbed wire that was popular too yeah these guys are getting that on their face bro a, and amber rose is she was she's a model she's gorgeous right to get script bash and dash or whatever that's just sounds like a terrible like simpsons game simpsons bash and dash yeah a sequel to simpsons <laughs> yeah. hit and run yeah like Fashion yeah. slash the fashion. See, Obi, I can't even. <laughs> she she's gonna have a third kid, Dash, and she's gonna say Bash, Clash, and da- yeah. <laughs> Clash, and then that's her dog. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Bash, Clash, Dash, and Slash. It's um, it's quite a statement. Oh, wow. Um, face tattoo is quite a statement. I mean, it's a statement, sort of like having one creeping up on your neck and stuff. But I, I mean, think those are cool neck tattoos. I mean, look at the end of the day, like we're both. So for anyone who hasn't watched. And just listening, we both have tattoos and stuff. It's not like, you know, we're out here judging people and we don't no, have it ourselves. No. But I do think face tattoos is quite a statement to make. I mean, you've got um, old mate Posty mm-hmm. with always tired underneath his I eyes. That was like, the biggest, that that's the dumbest thing, man. That's bold, man. Like, I mean, I suppose if he ever wants to get it removed in 10, 20 years' time, the technology is probably going to be way better than what it is now. So yeah. then, kind of like, whatever. I guess they could do whatever they want. They're they're making millions of dollars, and we're over here like, yeah, drinking water. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> um, would I get a face tattoo? Yeah, yeah. But I would get like the crown of my head. So my boy John John, shout out John Juanchito. Um, he is Chinese Filipino. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, Chinese Filipino. Mm-hmm. Um gangster motherfucker right like tiny just like that mm. gangster chinese kid and he has his whole head tattooed mm. um like travis barker style mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but in the beginning when i first met him in college he had a little like philippians 413 or something like that like a bible verse like tattooed yeah. on the on on his hairline i thought that shit That's was cool. hard especially because he had long hair and when he put his hair down you go you don't see it at all yeah, anyway yeah. and he had his hair down all the time or wearing a hat if you're wearing a hat you don't see it so I thought that was hard. And then he just shaved his head and got his entire dome <laughs> tattooed. And that looks sick. So um, when I'm losing all my hair, 
depends on what place I'm at in life. Yeah. If you if I'm a banker, which I won't be, I wouldn't get the head tattoo. <laughs> but you know, Megan Megan likes tattoos. My wife. Yeah. Does Sophie like tattoos? She does. We um, we um, gonna get one together. Aww. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're planning on getting one together. Just um, and we know what we're gonna get. We just haven't done it yet. I mean, Alfie boy. Yeah. Oh no no no. It's um, so in Swedish culture. They have um, this horse that is called a... Thunder horse. Oh, man, that'd be sick if it was <laughs> called that. It's called a... Um, oh, shit. Dark horse. Vita Hesten, Ooh, I think. So Hesten okay. means horse in Swedish. Right. Um, or Vesta Hesten, something like that. Okay. Uh, that's so annoying because normally, if I was to see the horse, I would know exactly how to mm-hmm. say it. Anyway, so it's like this little... Um, this horse that's painted in a specific way and usually they're red and they have like some color and shit is it dalek oh dalek heston dalek carlian dalek hast dalek hasten yeah dalek heston da yeah i don't even know dalek heston I, I give it up i give up but, but that's, that looks like a pinata so it's, it's, it's red it's kind of like that that's right sick. <clears throat> i'll throw it up here yeah it looks sick um but yeah so we're gonna get like a really basic um uh, like you know, like the geometric type tattoos. Cool, but not not necessarily sharp edges, mm-hmm. but that real simple thin lining. Mm-hmm. Um, but with dot work instead of it being cool color. Yep. It, well, it, maybe it'll be color, but it'll be dot work color mm-hmm. anyway. So it should look pretty dope. I like. And that. then it's like it's a Swedish thing, and and it's like she's Swedish, and like I'm with her and stuff. Yeah. So you know, you're Swedish cool. by association. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's m- rad. M- m- Moving, Moving on. on. Um, so, Big L, rest, rest in peace. In peace. <laughs> uh, ding, 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 ding. The jam. Thank you, Gangstar. Um, 21 years since his passing. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, we looked at Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous, which was his only studio album released during his lifetime, mm-hmm. which is um, pretty nuts to sort of that's crazy yeah. I mean I guess it's kind of similar with like Biggie and stuff mm-hmm. like that as well but crazy um, but track one of that put it on iconic mm-hmm. uh, like do you think it, it's like one of the most iconic well I think it's one of the most iconic classic hip hop tracks ever yeah rad you know um, for that to be your first track no intro no nothing just straight into that ballsy what's the statement the best statement ever like fuck you i'm here what did you just call it the the best classic hip-hop, hip-hop track yeah that's a good what, that's what, a good take of, on it no no, no yeah that's that's i just that's a good um explanation that's a good category to put it in yeah the good I think the so. best classic hip-hop track um but you know, let's be real. Do you think that he is, uh, that you think there's many rappers to date that sort of touch him on lyricism and uh, flow and like his wordplay? I, like, now, like nowadays? It's, it's tough because there's people that are really good with wordplay, but you can't even put them in the same boat because they're not, it's not that era. Like, let's say, um, Kendrick's amazing, but mm. it's not the same era, so you just can't even compare. That's that's how I feel personally. Um, so to answer your question, with a little asterisk on the side, no, no, I don't think there is either for the simple reason, just because there ain't. Not really. I mean, Nas is still there, mm-hmm. um, and he's from same era. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, I guess he's. <clears throat> there with him mm-hmm. but like anyone new um i think uh maybe chance a little bit i think um i'm thinking about it well why you think i will quote uh from all black which is one of the, one of the tracks on the album 
So don't step to this because I got a live crew. You might be kind of big, but they make coffins your size too. Mm. I was taught wise. I'm known to extort guys. This ain't Cali. It's Harlan nigga. We do walk bys and let them have it all. The crown is still mine because I drop ill rhymes. A lot of rappers talk that murder shit and couldn't kill time. Mm. What? Shut up, bro. Just There's levels to this shit, bro. A lot of rappers take that murder shit and couldn't kill time. Boo, 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 boo. Yeah, shots ah. fired. So good. Um, so good, man. I think there's only one rapper that tops him <clears throat> lyrically. Ooh. I just thought about it. Okay, 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 okay. None other than Nikki Fresh. Oh, shit. Straight out of the Hamptons, bro. <laughs> Don't sleep on it. Bro, could you... I swear to God. Imagine? She just has straight bars, bro. She has like all the best just writing for her, ghosting for her. Just every, yeah. And then just she just so happens to be someone who has like a really good delivery. Mm. What's really what's really good, okay, uh, is that is that your, would you put that up as like some of your best, what, what would that be considered? Uh, metaphors, alliteration? Me- metaphors. Uh, metaphors, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, but then Lil Wayne, if we're talking metaphors... You have to bring Wayne into the mix. You have but, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have true, to. You true, have to. You, true, have to. you true. can't true. not have him in there. No way. I'm going to show you my favorite, my favorite shit right now. Right. All right. Um, it's. It's. I'm. I'm just go a little, a little faster. Right. So you got fuck clothes like hot pieces couple thoughts on me and they hoses like divas got my vans on but they look like sneakers flipped a couple backs bass got in the speakers bass all in the speakers i'm a field like baseball place play ball face wall when the police has come i don't rock chanel i rock channel and know this in a purse it's a satchel blessing at you nah i ain't sneeze <laughs> but if niggas want steam or smoke then i match you Oof. Got a bullet with your name on the barrel. If hollows don't clip, you get nipped like his cat food. That dude, when I die, they got to make a statue. Bad attitude. This ain't a purse. It is a satchel. Ugh. All the super seniors mumbling and rambling, mumbling and rapping, mumble rapping. I, heart, I find it hard to find actual talent. I find it hard to find an actual challenge. Like Shabazz Palace, last acid hit, elaborate. Rap laps, rap labs, labyrinth, word to Kodax, Blacks, Lazarus. Call drops on the album skits. ASAP Rocky. Well, would you ever imagine? What, no, actually, I didn't Boys. think that at all. And the thing is, it's not even that. He just threw threw in alliteration as well. Like, yeah. and that's that that's was some mad level play. shit. That's why you got to listen to every track or, on the or, album. Or when you got um, when you got Tyler talking about, he goes. I got a belt with the holster. I am playing games, but I got some little niggas who would do it. So I pass the controller. You get press X out. Triangle your nose. Pause your life if you squares. Try to mess with my O's. Oh. Give me a break, bro. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's all on one track. That's Potato Salad by Ch- by uh, Tyler Creator and ASAP Rocky. Insane. So then my question is, is... Where, what the fuck happened? Like, you have... There's levels. A, a minimum, a, a minority, a minority of people who are still repping, yeah. still going hard, still writing, like, actually writing. And you've got these other... These are young idiots. cats that people just thought were real silly. And they act silly. And yeah, they do silly stuff. But... ASAP and Tyler, nobody expected potato salad from them. And yeah. they just went hard. Just And they were chilling in Paris doing nothing. They filmed it on like a phone or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, this is, to them, this is a throwaway. I mean, uh, the PlayStation all, controller shit, bro? Come on, son. That's all me. I love all of that shit, man. Oh. I'm all about it. Um, <clears throat> well, continuing with um, Big L. Rest in peace. peace. Um, he was part of a group called D I T L. Mm-hmm. Um, so check it out if any of you guys haven't. Um, it was uh, consisted of Lord Finesse, Big L, um, AK, something, um, 
fuck, someone else, I can't even remember, it was slipping from my mind, and Fat Joe, anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sort of like, you know, we mentioned Fat Joe last week. Mm-hmm. Um, see that little segue? Um, moving on. <laughs> moving on. So Fat Joe and Big Pun, I right. kind of touched super brief on last week and we said we'd talk about it next week. Go. Um, so, firstly... As a Latino brother like yourself, right. uh, growing up in BK, mm-hmm. New York, yep. what is your connection with these two? How does that look? What do they mean to you, my man? They, when I was little, I, it, it, it was, yeah. they were everything in the community, right? Yeah. Um, I remember, I, I just get flashbacks driving to Sears. Did you guys have Sears? No, but I, I, I've done right. time they, in America. They're, they're, yeah. they're gone, right? Sears, yeah. it's, it's that, that old. Sears is a 90s thing. I'm driving to Sears, and you have a big pun, jump man uh, mural on no the wall. Way. And I remember seeing it every freaking time. And wow. it has a little ponytail. You know, the, the, yeah, yeah. the big pun, jump man. And I remember seeing it and always just laughing and going, that's fucking hilarious as a kid, you know? And I had a neighbor named Margie. She's still there. Yeah. <laughs> it's 30 years later. She's, Margie's still holding it down, right? Shout out to Margie. Puerto Rican. Like, oh, yes. Get New, New York, New York hat. Like, yeah, born yeah, yeah. and raised. She's just, her family's from the, like, they're all Puerto Rican, but they live in Brooklyn. Yeah. And Margie was all about Big Pun yeah. and all about Fat Joe. So I used to get, you playing football? Sorry, bro. Right. You're over here. Yo, he's. <laughs> Keep an eye on this dude, man. <laughs> <Not kidding. laughs> um, Margie would, she'd always be blasting Big Pun and Fat Joe. And I never got it. Like when, I, you, when you're a little kid, you're not listening to the lyrics. Yeah, true. You're not understanding. And I was always like, they're just Puerto Rican rappers. Like what's the, what's the big deal? And then as I got older, I started to get obviously more into hip hop, more into the lyrics. Mm. I'm just like, oh my, oh, oh, this is murderous. Oh my God, Terror Squad. Mm-mm. Oh my God. And then um, and then there's a sense of pride that comes out of that. It's like, oh, they're holding it down for us. Yeah, yeah. There's not many Latin guys in the, like we had Nori, Noriega. Yeah, yeah. Obviously you got guys that are Latin mixed. You got Joe Budden, Latin mm-hmm, mixed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but there's no guys that actually held it down and then rapped in Spanish. Yeah. And then came back and rapped in English. Yeah. And they're hanging out with all the crew. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, we're represented. Like, it was, a, it, we're represented. It's like, you know, having an English cat hanging out with the rest of the hip-hop greats yeah. and going like, oh, he represents us. Yeah. And he's holding it down. And he's not leaving. And he's not moving to L.A. And he's, you know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. holding it down. So, to me, they were a huge, huge um, inspiration. At least now they're a huge inspiration. Yeah. Um, Big pun, rest in peace. You know big what I mean? Um, dude was big, though. Big pun was big. He bro. was huge, man. 700 pounds. You seen those suits? Crazy. Those suits, man. Big pun was big, but he had bars. And that's what got him that far. So, you know what I'm saying? Are you ready? All right. Lay it on me. <clears throat> All right. So, I'm going to full just read it off of Go. the iPad. Yeah. Because this is your thesis. This is my this is my thesis, okay? And right. hear me out, and I can go back to other bits if you need to. But yep. hear me out. I'm going to put end. the microphone to the side just so. Yep. Because yeah, your reaction is going to be big, son. Go ahead. Okay. All right. You may you may have uh, predicted this a little bit. I've been I've been spending the whole week thinking about what could you tell me about okay. Big Pun and Fat Joe that I don't already know. I'm potentially going to want more water. Yes, please you go. Right. Actually, that's a great plan. Yeah. But. Uh, because with all the fire, you, with all the fire you're about to spit, oh, all the you fire, extinguish it, bro. Well, you're definitely going to in- extinguish what I'm about to say. Right, let, <clears throat> let go. I think I'm about to uh, turn your world upside down, potentially, and maybe other people out there. So uh, don't shoot the messenger. Well, I'll wait till you put that back down because I, I want to make eye contact uh, with you when uh, I say this. Vet. Well, I think, yeah, personally. That Fat Joe killed his protege. Oh. Big pun. How did I feel that coming? I was I I right. Uh, okay. Okay. Right, I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that sit with you for a second. I'm gonna let that sit with you for a real, you know, for a minute. I'm okay. 
first off, I wasn't expecting that, but I kind of felt with the biggie news that you dropped, I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. all right, this thing is, he's wild. Right? Just, just FYI, in case uh, you're new, we, uh, we uh, talked about how I feel that Biggie was killed by Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, P. Diddy, Puff, Puff. Check out episode number two. two. Um, so, yeah. I thought you were going to say, like, Big Pun is Fat Joe. And Fat Joe, <laughs> and he just took his skin and, like, is walking around in Fat Joe. That's what I thought you were going to say. Some wild shit. Some, like, straight YouTube conspiracy stuff, right? Or they took Fat Joe's brain, um, Big Pun's brain, and they put it in Fat Joe. All right. But it's interesting that you say, say that. I don't though. think so. I don't think so, man. I don't know. I can't subscribe you to ready? that. They were you too ready? tight. They were too tight. Is ready? it the same thing as Biggie and... and it's more. All right. There's, 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 there's more concrete go research. Ahead. Well, well, I say stake, stake your claim. Stake your claim. My claim. Okay. So, the evidence is... <clears throat> and there's, another, there's something else you're going to be shocked about as well. It's coming up. So, the evidence is... Remember how um, we just spoke about Big Al? And you know how like they were in the same crew, DITC, you know, yep. we just talked about that. Um, well, Big Al was, say, a lyrical master. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's fair. Um, and he wasn't from the same area as Fat Joe. He was from, um, from Harlem, mm-hmm. you know, and the rest of the crew mm-hmm. was, you know, they're all from, uh, what, Bronx, Brooklyn? Uh, Fat Joe, Bronx? Uh, I, I, would, I would have said Brooklyn, bro. Bronx and Brooklyn are practically the same thing. It's just full of Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. You said Fat Joe or Big Pun? Fat. Bronx. Yeah. So, and I'm pretty sure the rest of the DITC was like from Bronxy area, uh-huh. right? And it's known, it's known that Fat Joe initially had a problem with Big L being from Harlem and not from the mm-hmm. same area. Mm-hmm. As you know, you can imagine back in the 90s that it was a lot like that. Mm-hmm. In fact, Joe has been quoted saying that Big L was the only person he ever did a song with and looked him dead in the eye and said, Joe, you better step up your game because I'm going to rip you on this song, uh, the enemy song. Uh, And Big L died in 1999 for seemingly no reason, shot in the chest and head, had no gang affiliates or anything that would have a result such as this. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so, so that's over here real quick. So keep that in the back of your head. Mm-hmm. Number two. <clears throat> Dubbed as one of the most thrilling and technical adept, uh, adapt rappers of the era. In such a short time from his debut album in 98, Capital mm-hmm. Punishment, he became the first solo Latino hip-hop artist to go platinum. Platinum, son. And that was a right. big deal back That's then. That's a gigantic Massive. deal. No one um, was going platinum. And then dies in 2000 of a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Right? And we talked about but, this already. Are you surprised, though? Well, this is the thing, right? So he's he was obviously heavily overweight, seven hundred pounds, whatever that converts. to. Are you saying Fat Joe just kept feeding him and feeding him and feeding him until he died? Like a method man? Is that what you see? No, no. I saw your ball. (laughs) Shit, just keep feeding Feeding you and feeding you. (laughs) Yeah, that's what that. Yo, yo. If you say that, no, no. I I got it. I got it. So, so, um, uh, see, he was heavily overweight, had a heart attack. Right. Um, but a heart attack doesn't need a murder weapon. It just needs a motive, right? Yes, indeed. Jealousy strikes again. No. Wait, 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 wait. I got you, I got you. So, Fat Joe had been grinding since like 92, 93. I think yeah. 93 he dropped his first solo album. I think so, yeah. Um, or something like that, anyway. And his pad one, right? The guy he took under his wings suddenly rose to fame quicker than he did and made more of a mark than he did in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Your man, Fat Joe, not only put the hit out on Big Al out of jealousy, not being from the Bronx, and claimed it had something to do with his brothers being in prison and some sort of payback, but his actions, whatever they were, caused Big Pun to have a heart attack, and in turn, that killed him. Took his rhyme book, released the album Jose, Jealous, yeah, jealous One, still, still Envy. Envy. Right, it's all in the title, bro. It's all in the title, Jealous, okay? <clears throat> In 2001, giving him time to rework Pun's rhyme book, etc., the album that he dropped happened to be the first platinum record that he got. Yeah. So you're saying he stole Big Pun's rhymes? I'm he telling you. He killed him and took his rhyme book. For sure. And also put the hit on Big L. 
you know why this kind of makes sense now that you say it? Tell me. See? I knew. I knew. Come. Tell me. Because after that, what did he do? Nothing, bro. He made What's Love with like a Ashanti. Like, what's love? He started being in that whole like Murder, Inc. Like friendship yeah, that, thing that, with Ja Rule. Pop, pop rap. The same thing that Diddy did. See, bro? Oh my G. I'm telling you're you, a, man. You're a detective, I'm you. bro. I'm telling you. Why are you... Why are you Yo, yo, hire him, FBI. This guy knows, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, man. Like what? dead set. Like I was, I was looking into loads of shit last night, and then, um, and then this morning, I had a little. I was like, oh, I just have another little look, because you know, I have another little look. Dang, bro. And um, and then I noticed that his album 2000, I came out in 2001, that went platinum, was you know, jealous. Um, one still envy, and it's like, he fucking is telling us right there. See, I can't be associated with you because I'm, I'm from New York <laughs> and big pun. I mean, uh, Fat Joe has pull and I don't want my family to die. So Bro, I promise you. I'm just saying this is not me saying this. I'm not agreeing. Yeah, I know. You. I'm not agreeing, though. <laughs> you know, I, my family's going to stay alive. <laughs> um, Fat Joe, I ain't got nothing against you, bro. You the man. The end. Because yeah. I got a lot of family in the Bronx. So if one family tells another family, and then some next thing you know, private jet be coming to Australia, and good, I let's have a conversation. My, my, knees, my knees get broken, bro. I Yo, need these things. Fat Joe, come on the show. Let's have a chat. True, but Fat Joe is the type to smack the shit out of somebody. Well, you know what though, I dead set. I reckon you know Joe Budden. Yeah, I think he is the perfect person to have That's the true. conversation with. You can't with intimidate Fat Joe Budden. Joe Budden don't give a fuck. <laughs> Joe, Joe Budden, Charlemagne the God, and Fat Joe, three guys who do not give a fuck about anything. And then me just going, so yeah, this is my evidence. Behind that a, I think behind a bu- bulletproof wall? Oh, 100%. Like 50 times glass, bulletproof, everythingness. Like, Too good. Yeah. And yeah, when you, after you say that, like really, he was, he was tough then, but then he went on to like make scary movie or like be in one of the scary movies don't get me wrong like he, he uh, his albums after that there were some there were ignore his sort of um radio releases there were some good tracks but nothing nothing like his prior tracks albums i mean after even so from understanding uh irv gotti produced mm-hmm. josie yeah jose yeah jose which irv gotti is murder inc yeah uh, he's got to be Jose, isn't it? Because that's Jose. Uh, yeah, 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 Spanish, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Hispanic. <clears throat> Puerto Rican. He's Puerto Rican, mm-hmm. yes. Um, Very Puerto Rican. Yeah. So he produced that. And then the next album that came out, I, fuck, I can't remember what it's called. But that, like, just did nothing. It was nothing, nothingness. And then everything just has just been really nothing, man. Like, I mean, and it was heavily featured and stuff. Same as, same as Puff Daddy, man, when he brought out. Like I think he bought out like two albums, or whatever, as I said before, yeah. after Big Ear died, and both of those heavily featured because he can't hold his own and because he was, wasn't and confident. And pop based, bro. I'm telling you, you see Fat Joe in the uh, in the oh. red leather like jumpsuit things yes. and stuff, pants yeah. and jacket, yeah. like his boy Puff. I'm mad. Ninety four yesterday conspiracy. I'm mad, bro. Just Sorry, man. Day. I didn't mean to, but it had to be done. But it makes so much sense. So much sense, really. Like I, I know it's so silly, but then it's like if you really think about it and let it let it stir in your head, you're like, oh yeah. But then and then if you go back and listen, if you listen to the tracks, man, like you just you can hear pun. You can hear him. You can hear him, man. Like okay, but okay. So Joe if you, if you're saying skilled. he killed him, right? So you're saying he he. Are you saying he killed him or like he caused the heart attack in any in some certain way, whether it was electric shock or this or that, like he found a way to give him a heart attack or did he just take advantage of he was always jealous of Pun, Pun died, he has access to everything because he's Pun's closest guy, he takes the book, takes a few rhymes, next thing you know, bing, bang, boom, he's got an album. I think, I think that the 90s was a mental fucking time oh, in hip hop nuts so if it if it happened like say 10 years ago or today yeah. i would say yeah he's this boy he just kind of took the advantage of the situation and the same is what i would say for puff as right. well he just took advantage of the situation yeah. 
But because it was the 90s and because everyone was like straight out from the fucking hood. Like Backstabbing from the ghetto. motherfuckers. Everybody, yeah, man. Right, like right. everybody was from that world, like, like just fresh and kind of still in it as well, you know? So yeah. it's like, I do not put it past any of them. So that's why my statement stands still. Puff Daddy killed Biggie. Fat Joe put the hit out on, um, well, Puff put the hit out on Biggie. Fat Joe put the hit out on Big Al. And, um, and Fat Joe Took advantage caused of a heart attack. You know. Oh, or, uh, and just didn't stop it from happening. Yeah. Didn't call people and shit. I like, I like your, your segments, bro. Conspiracies with Aaron. I gotcha. That's a new segment. We're gonna create a theme song for that. That's not a bad. That's not a bad thing. We do like a conspiracy thing every week. It's pretty interesting. Not conspiracy. The truth. The truth is being released, my son, my brother. The truth is wake here. up, wake up, those, my brothers those and white sisters. devils want you. <laughs> then why devils? The, the straight like uh, Israeli. Uh, what are they called? Not Israeli. The, the Islam. The uh, black Israelites. Yeah, yeah. Have you yeah. seen those guys in like no. Times Square, bro? They're crazy. Yeah. Black Israelites are nuts. They'll be like, there's a guy walking, like a black guy walking with a white girl, mm. dating, holding hands. They're jacked to shit, first off. Mm. And then they look like Power Rangers. Like they got this whole full suit on with like the headband <laughs> and the metal. You never seen those? We'll pop a picture right here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Literally, I'll, I'll show you though. Um, and they'll be like, my brother, what are you doing with the white devil? This is, she's taking your soul, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh yo, God, they go ham. And for some reason, it's legal to do it in the street. And they straight up harass people. And, wow. the, and they're jacked, so you can't do anything. And there's yeah, 40 yeah. of them. And they're like, keep going. And they got like this gigantic beards and they're yoked to the tits. Uh, Kendrick's family is all black Israelite. Yeah, if right. you listen to the end of Dan, uh, one of the s- songs... And damn, the end of one of the songs, he mm. talks about like, and Deuteronomy says, and it's his uncle or something like leaving him a voicemail, a black oh, Israelite true. voicemail. And like Kendrick well, came from that whole black Israelite style family. I think that's something. Well, um, <clears throat> yeah. So sorry to drop that bomb on you, my man, and sort of ruin wow. your, uh, your views. But, but the truth is the truth. The truth is the truth. Truth sets you free, my man. Apparently. Um, so in, mo, mo. look at these buff ass motherfuckers, bro. Yeah, straight okay. up, send me that and I'll throw it up. That's um, that's black Israelites right there, and they're scary, they, they don't scary. smile like nothing. They're just, so they, be, I, I think, or at least from what I've yeah, seen, um, they believe that they are the original descendants of Israel mm. and that they are who the Bible talks about. So they and and the white man's taken over that story yeah. of the Bible to to make it their own. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they there was black Jews out of Egypt, black Jews out of Israel, mm. and um, they are black Israelites. They wear the star of David. They wear these clothes. They have these ranks, and they march the streets hard. And they're like, we're gonna take of New York. They're gonna yeah of of, they, of Manhattan or like Manhattan. all the boroughs. No, they'll be in Times Square yelling at people, <laughs> just going hard, and. It, Oh, yeah, anyway. Moving on. Moving on. Um, well, that brings us to our uh, next segment, which is called First Impressions. Shoot. Um, so, Take Time mm-hmm. by Henry Baitup, mm-hmm. released last year. Um, haven't actually given a listen. It's been on my radar for... A long while since before it was released, <clears throat> and I just I don't know, just never listened to it. But um, my first impression. Let me. What's your first impression? I will tell you <clears throat> mine because I've got mine written. Um. Would you want me to go first? No, I'm just thinking. I'm trying to put it together. It's the English cat, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he's English. It's dude. good. It's good. It's very English. Mm. His accent is thick. So I I like the beat. I like the flow. I like everything about it. I get distracted by his accent because it's so thick. Really? That's that's the only thing. I get distracted. Like so I pay attention to his accent more almost than I do. It's just that English accent. That's interesting. Which is right. Yeah. Like it's it's his own flow. There's mm. nobody there's a lot of people trying to sound American oh, in their tracks. 
It sucks, I can't right? stand that absolute nonsense. A lot of people are trying to sound American, but I liked it. Yeah, I it's like good. It. I, I'm going to need to listen to it more. Um, but my first impression was, yeah, like I'd listen to the rest of his stuff. Yeah, for sure. Well, he's that's the only thing he's released. Really? Which is crazy. Dang. Like, well, um, I'm looking forward to the rest of his stuff. Yeah, for right. sure. Yeah. Um, well, for me, uh, like I said, I write it down, so I'm just going to read it off. Yep. But... Um, <clears throat> Um, I think for me, this is a track is what um, English hip hop heads like beg for. Right. You know what I mean? Like in the sense of um, that style of hip hop track, that's, that's exactly Mm -hmm. the one, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, when the beat kicks in after like 35 seconds or something, um, prior to that, you already have a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. Like you're feeling relaxed and then boom, the ease of flow from Henry is unreal. Um, what a journey his voice takes us on, man. You're being uh, poetic with this thing. Right? I know, I know. When I was, write, I was writing this like late last night and I was just like, shit, they were just flowing on my fingertips, yeah, man. Rad. Um, yeah, no, it complements the beat perfectly. So shout out to the producer, which I can, there, there was no sort of, maybe he produced it, I don't know. Yeah. But who knows? But shout out to the producer. Um, the talk singing works really well. It yeah. kind of reminds me of the streets a little bit. It does. It, that's what I was exactly going to say. I was like, yeah. it, it, re- it reminds me of the streets, like heaps. Yeah. And which is iconically UK, like yeah. that talk that, rapping that, yeah. sort of yeah. thing. Um, that's what I liked. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was perfect, man, like giving off that streets vibe, but, um, but still keeping true to himself, mm-hmm. right, for sure. Um, not like it was just like, um, it was clear, it's sort of clear that, you know, it's a slight influence, but not the whole thing. It's mm-hmm. like a five percent influence, and the rest is himself. Um, but yeah, as for the lyrics, they're incredibly relatable for pretty much everyone and anyone who really sort of pays attention to lyrics. Mm-hmm. Um, he rhymes everything so eloquently as well. Yeah. Um, even though he has a British accent, a lot of the time when British people rap it can be quite um not to be confused with mumble rap but it can be quite mumbled or mm. muffled no he's um he's very clear and precise is, which makes me hear the english accent a lot more <clears throat> yeah right. um but um but yeah overall a great storyteller switching up the style ever so slightly in places as well which is quite refreshing mm-hmm. um for me an instant sort of classic in in for someone who's like new quote unquote yeah. new to the game um, I know he's been rapping for years but like you know first track is released um, and in an English hip hop world not grime mm-hmm. like n- not that actual hip hop actual English hip hop yeah like your jest your um, brain tax mm-hmm. um, master uh, not master <laughs> Chester P Master P yeah um, in his past life yeah, yeah. Uh, Chester P jest um, Natty Dweller, all that lot. Mm-hmm. Like, that song sits up there with some of those tracks for sure. Skinny Man as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, super excited, super excited to see what's coming next. And you can check him on Spotify and iTunes. Rad. Um, definitely check him out, man. I'll put his handle up here as well. Yeah. For all you um, YouTube watchers, you can go follow him. Because mm-hmm. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. So, sorry. Um, and then secondly... Random, I was looking. I was listening on a Spotify playlist that's um, um, locals, like local music or whatever, mm-hmm. like local hip hop music or whatever, and it updates every week. Mm-hmm. And this was just from there, so I just pressed on a random one. I think I even just pressed shuffle, and it just I just picked the first one. So it's this dude called Rops One, um, and the track's called Frontline. Again, released last year <clears throat> in August. Um, so it's from Campbelltown, which is like a, a suburb in Sydney for yep. people who don't know. Um, it's more grimy. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. But for me, man, as soon as it, as soon as it was on, I was like, ooh, like you it was a it? banger. And I was just like, I'm not the biggest fan of grime either. Mm-hmm. But like when I hear something nice, then I'm like, I back it. Um, so yeah, so for me, 
sick bit of grime. Um, flow is nice. But this is the thing, man. I'm a lyric guy, and it wasn't anything special at all. Like, sorry to say, like, sorry to say, Rops one, mate, Giza, but we've heard it all before. You know what I mean? The whole, I rep these ends, I'm the best, no one is as good as me, you know, I'm going to do shit, I'm going to be around forever, I'm going to do this. Like, it's just all talk back radio, man. Like, I listened to some of the other stuff he released on Spotify, but there's only like seven tracks or something, but like individual tracks. But he has like 95,000 listeners monthly, which is wild. I mean, I don't know how that algorithm works. It's, it's, it's the West, bro. They yeah. support their own for sure. Well, well, yeah, that's what it comes down to. Right. Um, um, but they're all really similar. And every single track that came out is just so similar. Like what he's saying, he's talking about the same shit just on fucking repeat. Um, his flow is nice, don't get me wrong. And the beats are good for the most part, like from the other tracks as well. But my first impression on this track, that is a banger. Um, but if I never heard it again, I wouldn't even realize. So sorry about that, bruh. I think... Um I think that's what I think. Yeah. I think uh, that. I think it was not bad by any means. It not wasn't bad. bad. It was just not memorable. Not at all. Unfortunately. When, Sorry, when you, when you, uh, but, but at the same time, it's like this kid clearly has potential. Clearly. If he, if he associates with the right people musically, I think he has potential. It, it's just like you said, it's kind of overdone. The, the whole thing and, um, and coming out of Sea town mm. um, yeah, that's what you call it. uh it's it's just I, I'm unfortunately I'm not really into the West rap I'm just not like it's and that's that's all right like that's my opinion I'm just not into the I need something I need more substance I need something more musically balanced I need something full I can't just it can't just be a beat that sounded like it's from YouTube yeah and I a kid that rapped over it where he sounds like he wrote the lyrics in a day because it's 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 easily forgettable but at the same time this is not to say that it's bad i'm not trying to discourage it at yeah, all it's, it's just it's not one four it's not memorable yeah well while, while you, one's four is over here again they they might be cut from the same cloth but one four's flows come at you and they punch you hard 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 yeah. hard and it's like i still have their their flows live in my brain right now and mm. i'm not even a huge like grime drill fan yeah yeah oh yeah that's just what like they call like drill drill yeah. now right yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> uk it was grime yeah they, they really, and then the rest really is just drill. drill yeah um i'm not a uh, drill is like a chief key thing yeah so. that's right yeah yeah um i yeah or like lisi up in up in uh brisbane like he's memorable but yeah i, I i'll let's see what this what this cat comes up with later you know what i mean look any advice to uh anyone out there who who wants to start rapping and doing the rest of it it's all well and good saying what you are going to do and all the rest of it but just allow yourself like you don't need to be talking about that for seven tracks what's cooler is if you just do it yeah just yeah and you don't say sh you don't yeah. really say shit you're just about that life you yeah, know exactly and it's like ooh, fuck I, I, that's the whole music though is talking talking about what you do yeah but i mean bro if you seven tracks to talk about the exact honestly not it's everyone almost... can be kendrick not everyone can be cole not everyone can be these guys that are rapping right now that create stories they yeah. can't you know what i mean sometimes you they, they need to be there's levels to this, right? And they're on level one. And it's the exact same thing. All the rappers start out at level one. Yeah, this is true. You know? And then eventually, they start growing, growing, and their songwriting gets better. And it, But it, most of the time, it starts talking shit. Just really talking shit. Well, I guess that my sort of... The only advice that I think is worth me giving, in fact, I've changed my mind. This is the only worth yep. advice is don't surround yourself by people who tell you that your shit is fucking amazing. Surround yourself with people who are going to tell you, actually, man, you've been talking about the same shit for too long yeah. or blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, get a real friend, a real person to give you constructive criticism and but work it's, on it it's together. Hard. It's hard oh, when, of course. when your play, when your song has one point, one million plays. 
Yeah, exactly. Who, you know, my you song don't have my yeah. song is just breaking a thousand plays, just barely breaking a thousand plays, and that's what's crazy, man. Like one point one million doing something right, I guess. At that point, you're clear, like you're hitting a market, and it's a market that we don't understand. That's not us. We're not the that's market true. that he's aiming at. That's incredible for us to remember. You know, keep doing so, your thing, man. You do, do it up, you. do it up, little G. He looks tiny, bro. Yeah. He looks very little. And he's, I mean, by little, I mean like young, you know? <clears throat> yeah, um, that, that was my first impression. But, of him uh, as well. but yeah, fuck it, man. Like, just everyone should just be pumping music out. Can you also please, like, update your Spotify? You're over here with, like, a MySpace photo. There's a <laughs> there's a dartboard and, like, some crutch hanging out yeah. by the wall, like, in the, in the front of his mate's house. And then the other photo is, like, some butchered to death, like, screenshot of a screenshot of a screenshot. Yeah. Just get a proper photographer. You you have the plays. Clearly, people fucks with your shit. Just, Bro, just get, invest some money into it. Or just get someone with a new iPhone to take That's a it. picture. Done. Or even an old iPhone. Or, this shit yeah. looks like it was taken on a potato, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. With that being said. Uh, with that being said. Um, is there any sort of... Uh, anything going on the, like this coming week that you know of? Any sort of gigs or anything cool? No. Or uh, any product that you sort of come across that you think is dope that's worth a shout out? Um, shout out to So Far Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, I just met a girl that helps run it. Um, shout out to all the people that I got to hang out with on Friday. I got invited to a music jam event. Um, I was kind of the only hip hop influenced person there i guess yeah. even though they were covering like lauren hill they were covering like really good tracks um and the band was freaking incredible like i felt like nothing compared to them yeah um but shout out to them for the invite um if you want to check it out so far sydney they are a branch off of so far Sounds, which is um a gigantic movement uh spreading across the world so you got most recently you have like Krung Bin, you got Leon Bridges, you got Billie Eilish, you got like a couple people that played so far. And the whole, Sorry. uh, oh, over here channeling the spirits. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the whole idea of so far is the intimate setting, yeah. 30, 30, 40 people in a room. And then, you, and then you get these like artists to come and play these intimate settings. So they just started the so far up here. Check them out on Instagram. I think they, they got like a dot. I throw the Instagram in likes. Oh, the so far Sydney, yeah, that, that's just the st sort of starting up. But the so far, the re the original, the main yeah, yeah. one, um, man, the amount of artists that come through, and it's like super high caliber. Like, come on, man, you don't got Billie Eilish just playing any any old living room. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I could, so it's like apparently the tickets are hard to get. You got to apply for the tickets, um, and it's a it's huge. Like they got a lot of followers and clearly people are very into it Pe yeah. friends like when i went onto the instagram friends that i know that i didn't even know that they knew what it was yeah, yeah, yeah. they know so it's um i think it started in new york duh um, but yeah so far sydney they had their event on valentine's day mm -hmm. um yeah and it was right and I, I was just part of i guess like a little branch off of what they've been doing um so yeah just shout out to them sure. um and I can't wait for the next event. Yeah, sick. Shout out to those guys. Yeah. Keep doing the thing. Um, aside from that, I don't think... Oh, did you um, have any uh, listener comments or questions or no, anything? No, surprisingly not. No, I just got all that spam oh. stuff. Um, Give me a break. But then I only posted actually something up yesterday. Um, yeah, I post, I, maybe you should week. post it like way earlier. Yeah. Because I feel like I posted it up like an hour before the podcast. Yeah. It's like that's literally <laughs> only the six people that watch my story. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, um, we will post it. But yeah, if you if you want to, you can always slide into the DMs. Always, always. Um, either mine, Angel's, or 994's yesterday. Um, DM on Instagram. We'll leave a comment if you're watching via YouTube. Yes, sir. Um, also, if you're listening on the podcast... Um, app like the Apple Podcast or Spotify or you know whichever one you sort of get your podcast fix fix from. Leave us a little review, a little uh, little five star review if you feel like uh, being generous and let us know how we're doing. It uh, helps us get found by other 
people, like-minded people. Yeah. Like yourself. In the sea of Oof. tens, of, hundreds of thousands of podcasts. It's got to be hundreds of thousands. Easy. Where this little seed just coming up. Trying that's to fight, right. fight for ourselves. Look, this man. little sperm trying to hit the egg. Joe Rogan was uh, once said little seed. Joe Rogan was also the host of Fear Factor. I mean, he I mean, had yeah, a but, head start, you know. But you know, you know how much he earns now? A year of podcasting? Quadrillion dollars. $30 million. Yeah, fuck off. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. That's just podcasting, though. It's yeah. not like his Incredible. MMA event. And it's also not his comedy. Or whatever. Or his comedy, yeah. Fuck. And it's also not the coffee business that he runs or the workout business that he... The company that he runs or whatever. It's That's wild. Yeah. So One yeah. day, my G. One day. Uh, all right. Well, with that being said, uh, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify... Apple Podcast, follow, subscribe, share. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Peace. Peace. You.